We're all the way live. Oh, it's going across. It is going down. Welcome to Fit Live. Oh my God, you guys, I'm so excited. I'm always excited, but I'm especially excited when I'm bringing you guys phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal individuals in which you can learn, grow, and expand. And today is no exception to that rule. We have Marlon Evans, whom I will be introducing to you shortly. Marlon, do you want to tell the people hello? Hello. Thanks for having me, Cheryl. Looking forward to it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So I'm just checking all of my um, wonderful um, links to make sure that we're all linked up. And we are, which is a great thing. But now I'm going to share us with as many people as I possibly can so that we get as many people to get to know who Marlon Evans is and all the wonderful things that you're doing, especially um, as it relates to entrepreneurship, because that is the message of the day. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're getting people the information that they need in order to be successful. Would you not agree? A hundred percent. That's what I said, Marlon, you are gonna be amazing. All that <laughs> How y'all doing? How is everybody doing on this Thursday? Do you guys believe it's the last Thursday in May? We're done. We're going to enter June. Time is flying. That's what that says to me. Time is just flying. It waits for no one. It absolutely waits for no one. I have you being connected right now, Marlon, to so many groups you don't even know. <laughs> I am trying to tag as many of those that I know will definitely appreciate the value about what you're about to bring. So everybody, welcome to Fit Live. Thank you for always chiming in, being a part of this amazing community, allowing me to bring to you some really amazing individuals that are doing great things in the world that you need to know about. And Marlon Evans is no exception to that rule. We're gonna get started because Time is always of the essence. And as you guys know, I like to start on time and end on time, but I wanna make sure I give you as much information as I possibly can. If you're out there and you can hear us, I can see you, but I need you to tap back in. Let me know you're there. I also wanna ask you, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen and take notes because you're about to be enlightened. And a part of being fit is about getting as much information as you can, but the information is only good as if you have access to it and that you can use it. So please do take notes, tag a friend. I don't care, I know you got more than one. Tag a friend, invite them. Don't be selfish, don't use this information just for you, share. Share with as many people as you possibly can. Invite them to join the conversation. This is gonna be an enriching conversation with Marlon Evans, whom I'm going to introduce to you shortly. Um, Marlon knows this because I've, I've Marlon and I have had conversations and everybody on my platform um, also knows that I created this platform as a way to really showcase the talents of women, black women and women of color. Um, but I want to also be very clear that we need our men too. And we need those that are in places that are doing great things to walk beside us. We need everybody. I don't care what your ethnic background is or where you come from, because together we can change the world. And this platform is about uplifting those individuals, but we need you too. So there's no, no um, intent other than to uplift entrepreneurs um, in their journey to success and they need you. So please, 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 please do share, like, um, and make sure you're getting engaged in the conversation. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Marlon, um, first and foremost, I wanna thank everybody for taking time and always supporting me. We're here to highlight both the journey and the success stories of professionals and entrepreneurs of color. We want to explore all the important and necessary information to help guide, inspire, encourage all aspiring business owners and professionals of color. We plan to equip you with specific concrete examples, tools, tips, and tricks 
to lead you towards your own success, not only in business, but in life. So this always beckons the question, are you ready to be fit? What is fit, Cheryl? What is fit? Fit is a mental construct. It's based on three acronyms. I love acronyms. I don't know about you guys, but I love acronyms. It's a way to help me kind of cement and memorize the conversation that's about to be had. Fit, being mentally fit stands for faith, intuition, and tenacity. Faith is your ability to believe in something you can't see and to believe so much so that you can bring it to manifestation. I'm sure Google wasn't Google before somebody thought of it and sat back and had a dream and then it became Google. It's that's faith, believing in that. Intuition, learning how to trust yourself, learning how to tap into that inner voice, that small voice, and listen to it to guide you and to course correct when you're not moving in the right direction, but really listening to it because it's always speaking to you. And tenacity, my people, just go get it done. How do you do that? Well, you do that starting with faith, intuition, tenacity, and then you move forward with what we call the C4 matrix. And that's what we're doing today, expanding your role. Once you're mentally fit, then we can connect you. Communication, connection, collaboration, and community. It works, trust me, across the globe. I wanna say to you, thank you again for being here. And today, I'm bringing to you an amazing, amazing, amazing entrepreneur, a leader. Um, Marlon's professional career spans higher education foundation, Fortune 500 companies and startups. The driving force behind all of his career choices have been a desire to create positive social impact. Marlon, I'm with you on that one. I'm there too. In 2018, Marlon was named CEO of Next Cube. It's an investor that creates and accelerates frontier tech companies with an emphasis on digital health and fintech. Next Cube empowers entrepreneurs to bring new technologies to market, helps rising companies scale, and provides path to liquidity. The power of three. To date, Next Cube's portfolio consists of 75 startups with an aggressive value of $450 million. And over 50% of the startups are led by female and minority founders. I've just got to get excited about that one. <laughs> Last year, Next Cube launched the first startup accelerator designed to inspire entrepreneurship at historically black colleges and universities, HBCUs, in partnership with corporations such as AT&T, Franklin Templeton, Morgan Stanley, over 350 students from 50 plus HBCUs participated in this program. Prior to joining the Next Cube, Marlon served as president of GSV Labs, renamed One Valley, a global innovation platform that accelerates startups and connects corporations to exponential technologies, business models, and ideas. His career includes experience as a director of corporate affairs with HP. We share that. I used to work for HP, Marlon where he led HP company foundation programs, including Matter to a Million, and company-wide employee engagement programs in partnership with Kiva. Marlon has spent time in the nonprofit sector, serving as executive director of Ronnie Lott's All-Star Helping Kids, a national community foundation based in San Francisco Bay Area, dedicated to promoting a safe, healthy, and rigorous learning environment for disadvantaged children. He also has served as Director of Partnerships at the Knowledge Is Power Program, KIT, a national network of public schools that are successful in helping students from educationally underserved communities. He developed the knowledge, skills, character, and habits needed to succeed in college and the competitive world and beyond. Marlon, in his career at Stanford as a director of undergraduate admission and a major gift officer in the Office of Medical Development, Marlon is a member of the Jefferson Awards for Public Service. 
I want to say to you, I could go on about Marlon, but that says a lot. And Marlon, we want to welcome you to the Fit Platform. Welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Yes. How you feeling, Marlon? Oh, I'm doing well. I mean, you you bring the energy, so I'm just trying to keep up with you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. The energy grows. And I want to say to everybody, as we begin to start this dialogue and this conversation that's so needed for our community and for those entrepreneurs that are looking or seeking to get funding, get engaged. Ask questions. We have an opportunity to have Marlon for an hour. This is your time to ask as many questions as you possibly can of this amazing, amazing expert. We have our good friend, Jolene Nicholson, who says, so excited to be here for an amazing conversation. Welcome, Jolene. Know that we appreciate and love and adore you. So, Marlon, I have to always start the conversation off with, what are you passionate about? Oh, that's it. That's a great question, and I think it hopefully it came through in my my bio in the sense of I, I really just am passionate about making an impact, uh, figuring out where I'm best su suited to help the most most people and have the greatest kind of impact on helping folks realize their potential. When I think about my role as CEO, I always say it stands for Chief Encouragement Officer because um, it's really about allowing others to unlock their their potential. Well, amazing. Well, Marlon, I want to say to you, thank you for your passion and especially about helping people. I think that is so important. Um, it's something that is definitely needed in the world and um, we need more of it. I don't think we can ever get enough. I say to you, though, my platform, as you know, is all about being fit. Fit is a mental construct. Fit is about faith, intuition, and tenacity. It's about your ability to believe in something, the unseen. Let me ask you, Marlon, in your journey. You used to work for HP. I need to know what year. Oh, gosh. This is, um, let me see, 2000s is when I was there. Okay. So yeah. I was there for a long time, a very yeah. long time, right? <laughs> six years, a long time. Wow. So I was with HP for a very long time. HP was very good to me. So I have no complaints about the Hewlett Packard. Um, there was something that was truly called the HP way that existed, you know, and I loved it. And as I formulate my company, I have some of those same values that that Dave and Lou um, instilled in the people that work for them. But I would say to you as CEO and you know, just even on your journey, one of the things I try to share with people is anecdotal ways in which to thrive in this new economy. And things, Marlon, while your bio is beautiful and the trees are planted, the flowers are blooming, all that great stuff, I know that no journey to success doesn't come without some challenges. And I'd like for you to share, how have you used faith on your journey? Um, how has it applied for you? Yeah, for, for me, I mean, it's just always thinking about that there's something uh, bigger at play um, in that I'm I'm in the position that I am for a reason. You know, sometimes you, you don't necessarily know how you land at a certain spot. And I haven't had a very linear career. It's been pretty kind of bouncing, you know, here and there and just trusting in the fact that, you know, this door was opened, you know, up to me. That's where I'm supposed to you know, supposed to be and then just trying to navigate and figure out, okay, why have I been called to be in this role? And then really thinking about what impact I can have as, as a result. So, 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 so in your travel to become um, the role of CEO, um, you had to go through some hardship and, 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 I, I, I mean, okay, maybe I'm making it up. Maybe you did, Marlon. Maybe it's been all <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of tell you my journey because there has been challenges for me. Um, and as an example, one of the things that I often share with my audience is that most people always talk about this glass ceiling for women, right? That there's this glass ceiling that exists in that you know, we want to break the glass ceiling. And for me and for black women, it's not a glass ceiling, Marlon. It is more like a brick wall. And mm. the difference to me between a brick wall and a glass ceiling is that a glass ceiling is penetratable. 
So in other words, if you hit it at the right spot, you can crack it. And if you can crack it, then it becomes a weakening that you can open it up to other things. Brick, not so much. <laughs> Brick, you have to have the right tools. And even with that, you might chip away at it, but you'll never bring down the whole wall. And before you chip at it and bring it down, two more bricks are placed in its in where the first brick you were trying to chip away at. And mm -hmm. I, I say all that because I want to really like, I like to understand the true journey. You're an amazing man. You're an amazing father. You're an amazing husband. Like there had to be some times in your life when you, Marlon, were challenged. Mm -hmm. And in those challenges, you were able to find a higher road. And that's what I want to hear. I want to hear about that. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, 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 it's true. I mean, I, I'll, I'll preface it by saying I've been extremely blessed um, to be where I am, you know, now with two great parents who instilled great values, you know, into me and afforded me great opportunities, great education. And so, you know, those, you know, parts of, of my life are just blessings. Um, but that, of course, does not me eliminate that there are hardships and challenges, you know, along the way that we all that we all experience. And and for me, it's always just kind of, you know, leaning into the, that that initial point around, you know, my my faith and just saying, well, OK, I know there is not something that is going to be given to me that I can't handle um, that is too big for you know, for me to achieve, I just need to figure out like, what are some of those resources around me that are there to be, you know, helpful? And how can I tap into some of those resources? What people um, am I surrounding myself, you know, with who are going to encourage me on my journey, as well as, you know, understand, and maybe see things in me that I don't even see, you know, in myself. And so when I when I think about those times where, I was facing, you know, real, you know, challenges that I thought were too difficult for me to over overcome. I would always just kind of tap into the network that was around me to help me navigate those uh, those opportunities, and uh, not always uh, successful. But I feel like you just learn you learn so much when you get knocked down that um, I often look back at some of those opportunities as as really the ones that kind of form who you are as a person, the successes are, are great, you know, as well, but it's those, those challenges where you hit them, you get knocked down and then you learn a lot about yourself and resilience and tenacity as you, you know, share to continue to press on. Wow. You said a mouthful there. And one of the things I got is really about, building community and about tapping into resources is what you said. And I think a lot of times when we face an obstacle, it's that the obstacle becomes bigger than our ability to get over it. When that's not true, that's the perception. I know that's what we see, but it's not. And it's about if you don't know how, or you don't have the tools to, then you tap into others that can be your vision and be your insight, which leads me to my next question with you, Marlon, because I'd love for you to talk about next cube, who you are, what you do. Yeah. So it, that you speak of the, the community, um, we focus on supporting really early stage uh, entrepreneurs who are just getting their businesses off of the ground. And, you know, and, and as you, you know, there's not, there's, few things more challenging than being a, an entrepreneur and, and launching new new opportunities. And so what we try to do is bring bring some financial resources to bear to help, you know, underwrite some of those costs. And then even more importantly, provide them with the technical advisory kind of operational support um, to help them navigate those challenges that they're going to inevitably face as a as a business. And so if we can make that process a little bit easier for them so that they can focus on their product and what they're trying to accomplish, we can help them get to where they want to be 
just a little bit faster. So think think of us as a as a community, you know, a network of investors, corporations, individuals, all who have a, a passion for early stage startups. Well, awesome. And I love in the bio where you said that, you know, out of the 450 million that you guys have actually worked with these 75 startups, which is huge, um, that a majority of them are women. I got excited about that. I <laughs> really excited. And then, um, and they're also minority owned. Are you seeing this to be a trend or something that's always been there, Marlon, and we just not paid attention to? Well, no, I mean, it's, I I wish I could say that um, we've always paid attention to it, but the the numbers don't, don't reflect that. And I think people are starting to kind of pick up their head, you know, post kind of 2020 and COVID and um, social unrest and everything that people were having to need to reflect and say, whoa, there's, there's tremendous inequality in America. You know, it is um, supposed to be kind of the the land of dreams, and not everybody has has access to to those opportunities. And and while we knew that all all along, I think kind of the the rest of the country kind of had to to really take that head on. So there are absolutely kind of post uh, last year a lot more initiatives that are focused on entrepreneurs of color on uh, female founders closing the the wealth gap in this uh, in this country but there's just a ton of work that still needs to be done you're it's it's not okay to just you know verbalize it like there's hard work that goes into actually you know making some of those um, changes a, a reality and so that part of the work still needs to be done, but I am really, you know, happy that folks are starting to recognize that talent is evenly, you know, distributed, but access to opportunities is not. And if we can figure out a, a way to get that uh, access to these resources to communities that have been often overlooked, we can start making some real changes in this country. Right. Well, I think that your company is one of um, many out there that are really, really spearheading and leading the way for that change. And I'm thankful and I'm grateful for you. What does an entrepreneur do to get access to Marlon? What does an an entrepreneur need to do to say, Marlon, I think my business is perfect for you and I want to be considered. What would a business need to do? I would I would just say first do do a little research. I mean we're we are focused in um, on digital health and kind of financial services, financial inclusion uh, companies, but really just tech enabled businesses that have an opportunity to really grow and scale. We can we can sometimes get around the specific you know, industry. If we're if we're really excited about the the company, so I would just you know do a little research on some of the investments that we've made in the past and the types of companies that we've we've supported. Um, one thing that we often tell our tell our portfolio is investors are getting hit up all the time, um, and so getting a, a message just you know out of the blue that's not a referral is is fine, but making sure that you're doing a little bit of the homework in, in advance to say, well, this is why I think you would really appreciate learning about my, my company. And, and once that is kind of, a, you know, established, then we can kind of move forward from there. But we're, we're pretty, I'm, I'm definitely pretty easy, you know, over LinkedIn, over email, I'll respond to, to everyone, but it's just um, to get a, uh, an audience, you know, if you will, to really move down the path, it's it's helpful to have done a little bit of homework in advance. Right. So, um, audience, what he's saying to you is, do your work, do your diligence. There are a lot of companies that are out there that are looking for you. You want to make sure you're tapping into those that are looking for you. So, if your business is in healthcare, you don't want to look for pet care, right? You want to look for companies that are aligned with you, and I didn't mean that to be in any way other than informative, because a lot of times 
especially as entrepreneurs. I know I'm an entrepreneur. You're grabbing. I mean, you're out here and you're just trying to do everything you possibly can. You don't want to leave any stone unturned, but it's better to be strategic than it is to be tactical. Strategic is when you're really thinking about what your end goal is and who can best help you get there. Tactical is your day in and day out functionality of what you do. And so you want to make sure you keep those separate. And that's what I hear you saying, Marlon, when you say that. Um, mm -hmm. Just being mindful. And when you're coming to that, you're pitching to the right person because you want to make sure that your pitch counts. You want to make sure that when you are using your energy and trust me as an entrepreneur and, and I'm Marlon, I'm sure you know this too with all the entrepreneurs you work with over the 75 that you guys have pushed through. And I don't know how many more that may be the 75 you pushed through, but not the number that you've actually worked with right through the process mm -hmm. is that you really need to make sure that your energy is really being counted every day. And it's so easy as an entrepreneur to be pulled in 9,000 direction. And just because you're busy doesn't mean you're being productive. I hope that I'm talking to somebody. I hope somebody out there is hearing me. And I'm not telling you for something somebody told me. I'm telling you from my own personal experience. I can be busy every day. Busyness does not equate to productivity. Productivity or doing the necessary things to get you to the end goal. And so, Marlon, am I preaching to the choir right now? No, 100%. I, I should have my notepad out here <laughs> taking, <laughs> taking notes. No, oh, but it's so true. And Marlon, I think as entrepreneurs, we have these amazing ideas. I'm very passionate about this platform. I'm very passionate about the work that I do. No one, I challenge you. So if anybody's out there listening, I hope you are. I challenge you. I'm so passionate about what I can do that I can tell you why I do it and why it's good any day, Monday through Sunday. I can tell you why it's good. I can give you stats. I can give you financial numbers. I can give you history. I can give you whatever you want because I'm very, I've done the homework. And that Marlon is what you basically are saying. Do your homework, know who your audience is and know who you're going after and know why. Because if you don't know your story, then who's going to know it better than you? Yeah, and in particular, in the in the early days where you don't have a long track record of success or of you know um, kind of outputs that you can show someone, so it, in the end they're really investing in you as a person and your ability to deliver against the passion and the vision that that you have. So. If I'm investing in in someone, I need to have a real comfort level that they're in this for the long haul. So there's something beyond just the the dollars and cents of it that's motivating them to you know to pursue this path, and then also that they know their business inside and out. To your point about the numbers and the um, and what some of the opportunity sets are, and and sometimes you can just ask a few questions of someone, and we. I by no means consider myself a, an expert in, in all things, but you know, having some general knowledge and you can ask a few, you know, maybe probing questions. And sometimes it becomes very clear that the person only has a surface knowledge of what they're trying to trying to accomplish. Like you need to be the expert in whatever you're doing. It could be to your point, pet cares. Like you need to know everything about what pets need if that's the business that you're that you're running because you know at the end of the day you're the one that's going to have to be making those tough decisions as to where you should take your business we can only be supporters and you know um, help along the way yeah absolutely you bring up a great point so okay i ask these questions because they come up in my head like we have a list but these just they come in my head Marlon, and i just kind of get them out so one of the things that you were talking about is being an expert. What do you see as the number one mistake most entrepreneurs make when they come to an accelerator program? And before you do that, tell them what an accelerator program is. Yeah, so it's um, most accelerators are anywhere from, you know, a three month program, kind of four month program where it's like, uh, just think of it kind of a boot camp for your, your business where you're really being pushed to think about how you're going to grow and scale your businesses and being very reflective on 
were some of the areas that you could really need some support and develop? Like, well, how, how do you start refining your, your product? How do you start thinking about product market fit and the, the problem that you're solving for your, your customers? So we, we really press on the, the companies to really look at all of the assumptions that they've made. You know, you made an assumption, let's prove it out. Go talk to 10 people and ask them, do they want your product? Like, would you pay for this? You may not even have the product, but can you get 10 people to say, yes, if this product existed, I would pay for it. And then ask them why. And, and so a lot of that customer, you know, discovery comes out during that, during that uh, acceleration period. But, um, you know, it, it, there's, depending on where you're at, what stage you are, the kind of the benefits might, might differ. But uh, fundamentally, that's kind of what we're, what we're looking at. And then I would say sometimes the mistakes that that entrepreneurs make is and it's somewhat contradictory to what I just said, but they they think they know everything, right? And so they're they are the expert in their field, and so they're they're not necessarily open to what other perspectives might bring you know might bring to the table. So being kind of aware and really self aware is is important important and being coachable, um, not that. You may not end up in the same place, but being able to understand and take in other people's perspectives as a leader is is uh, so important. Because um, at some point, it's not just going to be you and your buddy who launched it. It's going to be five, ten, twenty, a hundred people, and they all need to buy into that uh, into that initial initial vision. So I would say just you know thinking about um, how you can take in some of those. Uh, varying perspectives, and then the last thing that I that I would say is really exhausting the opportunity um, because you can get to a place where resources are being shared with you, but you're not tapping into it fully. Um, you're not uh, leaning into it as much as you could. Maybe there are other reasons you're busy and um, other things are are potentially going on, but we always encourage our portfolio to exhaust the opportunity. Don't leave any stone unturned. If, if we've connected you with Cheryl Grant, make sure you make that phone call. Pick it up and talk to her because you don't know what might come from that, that conversation. Marlon, you bring up a really great point. Um, one of the things I talked about earlier is that we do a two-part training and it's all about being mentally fit first, really grounding in yourself. And then the second part is how to build your network. And your network is really, your network is your net worth. And um, we believe in, just like now we're having communication. Communication builds connection. Connection builds collaboration. Collaboration builds community. Community is one of the most powerful tools we have right now. Mm -hmm. In the community, you can get any and everything done. But um, you were just speaking and you were talking about making sure that you're tapping into, making sure that you're understanding what your value is, as well as when someone takes time out of your schedule, just like these events that I do. Right now, right now, and I say to everybody listening, right now they're free. You're getting this valuable information for free. This is digital mentorship in its most purest form. You're getting an opportunity to talk to an expert who's living every day working with entrepreneurs. He's raised over with the 75 companies worked with $450 million. If you're trying to get there, you might want to listen. And we have to be willing to do the work, but you got to do the follow through. As much as it is, is doing the work. And I'm going to tell you one of the hardest things I think for most of us is the follow through. Mm -hmm. so cool to, but I'm going to tell you something. I have some key people in my life. Jolene is one. She's on here. Um, Marcia is another. When Marcia told me to call Marlon, I don't ask questions. I really don't. Marcia has proven herself 150,000 times over. She's on my board. She's a part of my advisory team, but everybody she connects me with counts. And when she told me to call Marlon, okay, Marlon, we had a few bumps. Don't talk about the bumps. <laughs> Don't tell people about the bumps. But talk about the diligence. Talk about the diligence. Because mm -hmm. I didn't give up until I made it happen. 
And you didn't give up on me until we made it happen. And through this connection, you're here. And I see us even collaborating further. further. So I just say that to people because it's so important and it's such a little thing that people don't take advantage of. You have to follow through. Mm -hmm. Have to follow through. You have to be present and show up. Um, and one of the things that you know you often find is that people are wanting somehow there to be a, a shortcut to where <laughs> they want to get to. And that, that McDonald mentality, right? <laughs> yeah. I want it right now, right? Right now, and if you're, you know, if you if it's not going to come right now, then I'm not going to, you know, waste my time or. And so, I, I, if you are approaching it, and that's I think from a, it's just a, a perspective of always wanting to learn that if the the engagement or the conversation that that we have, I'm going to learn something from. I don't know where it, it's going to go. I don't have any preconceived you know, notions, but to your point, you know, trusting your network and saying, okay, if this person that said is a good person for me to connect with, I'm going to follow through and I'm going to have that, have that conversation. And that gets back to kind of that whole real uh, importance around making sure you're surrounding yourselves with people who, who you trust and who you respect and who can help connect you with um, and open doors on, on your behalf that you may not have access to. And to be honest, that's really what we're trying to do at, at NextCube. It's we're bringing in, you know, founders who some, maybe other folks said, hey, we don't, um, we only invest in folks who go to certain universities or who have a specific background because we can kind of trust that, that that's our, our network. And so what we're trying to say, let's, let's blow that network you know, up and bring more people, you know, to the table so that they're able to make those, you know, connections on behalf of folks who wouldn't otherwise have access to, you know, to those doors. People did that for me. People opened doors for me that they didn't have to make made connections on my behalf. And so now it's my job to do that, you know, for for others. And we just got to continue to continue to pay it forward. Well, I'm going to say to everybody who's listening, um, this is an amazing conversation that we're having. And these are tips and tools that can not only propel you into your next level of your business, but just in life in general. They're very simple tools, but I think sometimes we take things and make them more complex than what they have to be. It is the little things that help you to get to where you need to go. And building relationships, there can be anything more powerful than that. If you mm -hmm. miss that, then you miss this network. You miss what I'm all about. I'm all about connecting the dots. If you look up in the right-hand corner, it says connect dots. At least it's my right-hand corner. I don't know if it's your left hand <laughs> My right-hand corner. It says connect dots, um, which is one of my technology companies that is all about connecting the dots. How do we build a bigger, stronger, and better? And it is through collaboration, it is through community, it is through learning, it's through understanding so that you can learn from others so you don't have to make the same mistakes. You don't have to do the same things. You can truly come to this platform and learn from others so that you can propel yourself even further and faster on your journey to success. Yeah. And I would just one thing I would add on the on the follow up, which I think sometimes missed and it is a little thing, is after somebody does make a introduction on your behalf, circling back with them and just saying how, letting them know how the conversation went, thanking them for that intro, and um, because then they're they're more likely to to want to do that again or come across somebody else who they would want to put you in touch with. It's just like like all the things you learned in in like kindergarten. I didn't come back to, to fruition. Please, thank you. Um, being respectful. I mean, just all of those little small details. I think we sometimes take for granted, especially now that we're in a more kind of digital uh, environment where you're not always always face to face and you don't come across people, you know, on a regular basis. But I just found that that can make all the difference in the world doing some of those little things because it it has become somewhat of a um, 
you can you can distinguish yourself um, just by you know do following up and, and following through. Wow, you know what, Marlon, you bring up a really good point. We've really entered into a new um, paradigm shift. We're in the digital age. I mean, we were moving towards it. We knew we were in it. Now we're in it. Like this is this is our new our new norm. And but I don't think that this new norm usurps basic practices. And what you're speaking to is just basic things that still they're human fundamental things that people general they just love and that's being connected. And when you take enough time to say thank you to somebody, thank you goes a long way. Gratitude goes a long way. Nobody owes anybody anything. Um, and being thankful for the relationships, don't whoever you meet, I'm a mind, I am a power networker. So I believe in people and I believe in even if you've not followed through at the time or something happened, always make it right. There's no reason not to make it because you never know. I'm a firm believer in never, ever burning a bridge. Don't burn that bridge. You never know when you might need to cross it again. It may not be for you at the time. And it's so funny because, Marlon, I don't know if you find with the people that you're working with, especially as you're coaching them, you know, and coaching doesn't always come across. Maybe it becomes personalized and defensive. The best thing you can ever do is take advice. If it works for you, incorporate it. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, then let it go. But you don't have to make it become something else. Marlon, am I making sense right now? A hundred percent. Okay. hundred percent. Okay. Okay. Because I, I generally find that, not find, I work with a lot of millennials and I, I have a network of actively, I have about a hundred girls that I mentor and actively about 20 like actively about 20 and I and my mentor is Les Brown. Do you know who Les Brown is? Am I mm -hmm. dating myself? So glad Marlon that you know who Les Brown is. You should. <laughs> but who's listening should too. That's my mentor and I admire and I love and respect him. But he told me many years ago that how you do one thing is how you do everything. And people will remember, they will remember how you treated them. They will remember how you made them feel. And so as we're going through our quest of entrepreneurship, you never know the person that you least suspect that may not look the part because you walk into a room, they don't have what you think is that successful. It will be the very person that could take you over the line. So just be always mindful of those that you're around. And for those of you who are listening in and saying, oh my God, this is so basic. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised in our adulthood how often we forget the basics. And the basics are the fundamental platform to take us to the next level. Do you agree with me, Marlon? If Marlon agrees with me, then it's a yes answer. <laughs> Absolutely. You do. Well, awesome. Well, I want to say, if you're out there listening to us, this isn't meant to be a monologue. Just between Marlon and I, um, it's meant to be a dialogue, which includes you. What questions are you facing in your entrepreneurial life? If you're listening to me or you pass them by or you listen later, it doesn't matter. What are you challenged with? And how can we here on this platform support you? How is the information resonating with you? Marlon talked to you about being the importance of follow through, the importance of being mindful about doing your due diligence. Don't always go to someone. People think networking is um, somebody doing something for them. That's not networking. That's what I said in my whisper voice and my inside voice. It's not networking. Networking is what can you give? I did. I said you. Here we are. You. What can you give? Because by giving, you will always receive. I promise you. I promise you, you'll always receive. You want to add something to that, Marlon? No, I think that's that's exactly right. I mean, when you're approaching someone about what you're building and the passion that you're you're bringing, it's going to shine through. It's going to. Um, they're going to learn something as a part of that process, and they're they're going to appreciate that. And even if it doesn't then result in what you were hoping to get out of that engagement, they're going to remember that passion and they're going to remember how you introduced them to something new and a new, a new concept. And it may circle back at some point, you know, in the future. So 
understand that you're you're adding value just by your your own passion and what you're bringing to the you know to the world and it may or may not resonate with that specific person and they may refer you to you know refer you to someone else but uh, you're adding value in the process and then potentially they may be able to add value back absolutely so marlon so what are the things that are going on within your organization and marlon how can we support you yeah the big initiative we have right now is our work with our historically black colleges and universities hbcus actually next week is the launch of our our first inaugural cohort we'll have nine companies uh, that will be going through a two-month program you know with us so we're super excited about having them um be able to really focus in on their their businesses for the summer and hopefully prepare them to a place where they can go out and raise some some capital here in the in the fall and so that's our our big priority in the uh, in the short term so if you're somebody who's um you know kind of interested in learning more about the the companies please go to our our website next3.com uh, backslash hbcu and you can learn about the teams and what they're building. And if there's something there where you say, oh, I could be helpful to that particular company in some form or, or fashion, please please drop us a line and um, let us know. And we'd love to connect you, with the, connect you with the teams. Well, absolutely. We want to do that. We want to make sure that we're here supporting you in every capacity that we possibly can. Do you, you have that whole HBCU initiative going on are there other ways in which um, my guests could possibly support you? Maybe in the way of donations. I don't know. Yeah, um, no, we yeah, we we actually are because it, it's you know currently an organized within Nextcube, but we're actually going to spin it out as a as a nonprofit. So we're going to need to raise some some donations for uh, philanthropy. So that would be fantastic if you know of corporations that are interested in diversity and inclusion and entrepreneurship issues that they might want to learn about the about the program we always could use more corporate you know supporters uh, along those lines and um, and then if you have uh, relationships at any of the HBCUs with either faculty members or administrators we're always looking to increase our our connectivity to the schools with different different contacts so any one of those things would be fantastic and amazing if um, somebody out there who's listening would be able to uh, support. Well, we definitely want to be there. Give me your website again, because I don't think I put the correct one up there. I want to put the right uh, one. It's just nex3.com. Um, and then there are different tabs, but HBCU is, is one of them. You can learn all about the, the program there. Okay, so this is good? That will do it. Okay. Okay. One. I oh, actually, to... sorry. No. No T. Okay. Let me just... thank you. Next three. Dot com. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me do it like this. Okay, guys. I mean, we need your support. We can't do this alone. So, all I ask is that when you support Marlon, just let her know that I sent you. Um, tap back into the Cheryl Grant Connect Dots Network so that we let our community know that we're here to support the organizations that are supporting us. That's very important to us. And it's very important to me, Marlon, that um, I work with individuals that are truly about advancing the community. I serve on the African American Chamber, Oakland African American Chamber of Commerce as vice chair. And we have about 353 businesses and growing and it's all about how do I support them and how do I help them and through my platform and platforms like yours I think it's a great opportunity for them to really take their business and level up and take it to the next level mm -hmm. and so I want to make sure that I'm always in communication and in collaboration in that regards and anything that we can do on this platform Marlon to help support you in your efforts any events that you're having you know you want me to show up and speak I got you I got you. Let's just let's just make sure that we make it happen. I know that you have um, spoken to um, my good friend Kimmy Palooch, um, who's also doing some amazing work, and she's also 
been on this platform, but we all are striving towards the same goal. And that's truly to uplift our community and really get the voices that need to be heard. And if you have something to sell or something to position, we're here to help you get your voice out into the greater world to make that happen. So it gives me great pride and great pleasure um, to be here. One of the things I love about what I do is that I get an opportunity to talk to some amazing individuals such as yourself. And I get an opportunity to really explore all the ways in which I can help my community to grow and be better. And so Marlon, for that, I can't thank you enough for being here today and really talking to me. One of the things I like least is I swear the time goes by so fast. <laughs> it goes by so fast. People say it's a whole hour. I'm like, it's not that long. An <laughs> hour is not that long, especially when the conversation is rich. And especially when you're sharing such um, great information, it, it just goes by. So we have 10 minutes, granted, and I'm gonna take advantage of all of those 10 minutes, Marlon, I'm gonna take advantage. Um, is We've already talked about how we can support you and what you're doing. I'm gonna ask you right now, if you could leave entrepreneurs with, one piece of advice, excuse me, I just got the hiccups. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> you can give them, I'm not nervous. Don't you get hiccups? From people? <laughs> um, um, but anyway, where you can um, give them some advice. Think about what you would tell them. But before you do, that's okay. Think about it, because I'm going to be making some announcements. First of all, I want to say to everybody who's been a part of this um, journey with me, Thank you. Thank you for trusting me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for showing up every week, week after week. Thank you for your emails, your texts that encourage me to continue to do the work. I'm very passionate about this. I'm not going anywhere. My goal is to reach 50 million women and we're going to do it this year. I don't care. We're going to do it. I'm dragging Marlon with me. Yes, I am. Everybody's on this platform gets to be pulled with me. It's a beautiful thing. He's going to benefit from those 50 million women as well as I am. Here's the benefit for me. I really want to impact you. I want to empower you. I want to inspire you. This is my life's purpose. I know I was born for such a time as this, and this time is to promote and uplift you. I believe in not extending a hand or giving you a handout. That's temporary. I don't want to do anything temporary. I want to do things that are long term. I want to give you what I know I need. I want to give you what the tools and the resources and the training that I know that I needed. And I want to give you my arm, my arm. Do you see the whole arm? I want to give you my arm. I literally, I want to give you my arm. What does that mean, Cheryl? What does that mean you want to give me your arm? I want to give you access to funding. I want to give you resources and training. And I want to give you digital, digital, okay, get that word out, digital mentorship, what we're doing right now. I want to give that to you. And we are doing that. And through my platform to reach the 50 million women, we're going to continue to do that. But I cannot do it alone. There's no way. It takes a community. I said that before, the C4 matrix, communication, connection collaboration and community. It takes that. So I need you. What do I need you to do? I need you to number one, support Marlon. <laughs> support him. I need you to do that. Number two, I need you to support me. I need you to go on to YouTube and subscribe. It costs you nothing to do that. I need you to like my Instagram page, um, Facebook pages. Um, I have five of them. So any one of them, Cheryl Grant Daily, which you see right here, Cheryl Grant, I have Fit Live, I have Connect Dots, like my pages, and join me on this journey. We are about to embark upon in the next week, we're going to start doing challenges, Marlon. And these challenges are, I am about to, um, Marlon, I am about to turn 60 years old. Oh, come on. Good day. <laughs> I'm not so good about that. 
Like, not... my kids make a total joke about it. They're like, I introduce them saying, Oh, these are my kids, they're 82, and I'm their mother. <laughs> and then it starts this whole conversation. But no, I'm really excited. But more importantly, being 60 is not it's not the number. Marlon, it's about how do you feel? And being fit, this platform is about being mentally fit. Because when you're mentally fit, you can do anything. If you can't do it here, then you can't manifest it in your life. And I want to help people on these challenges. So we're going to be start doing these fit challenges. Marlon, you can join in. That's okay. I'm going to tap in. We're going to join in. It's all about being mentally fit. And we're leading to a destination of which I'm going to announce. And you guys are going to be so excited about. So I want to encourage you to continue to follow me. I want to thank those of you who have already been following me and that have subscribed to um, my platform, my newsletter, where you're getting great information. I want to continue to encourage you to do that. I'm here to inspire you. If you're tired, you don't know where to go, you have this platform in which to uplift, educate, and empower you. So continue to tap into us. Um, so Marlon, um, with that, and we got a, a show coming up next week. We have challenges coming up. We just finished a Mother's Day challenge, which we're so excited about the gift box. I'm going to post pictures, you guys. It's amazing. You would have loved to have received that gift box, but don't worry. There'll be more. So Marlon, I started off asking you a question. <laughs> I'm I so off that. Marlon's like, what did you say again? Like, what were you talking about? <laughs> I'm still trying to get my mind around that you're 60. I'm not. But you know what? It's okay. And you know, some people don't tell their age. They're very private about things like that. I'm very proud. Um, I think that with age comes wisdom. And it's like wine, right? I don't have any. I was looking for some, but I don't have any. But wine it's like fine wine it gets better with time so that's kind of hard well now on the, your to your question around word of advice i mean we so, someone once told me in particular as it relates to to entrepreneurship is that you want to be married to the problem and not the solution Ooh, so I like being, married to the problem and not the solution. So they're they're going to be if if the focus is the other way, then you're you're saying if the, if it doesn't fit with what I think is supposed to happen, the solution that I've created, you know, in my mind, then you you ignore it. You just say, oh, that's that's not in alignment with how I'm seeing the world. Whereas if you're focused more on the problem, you're well, you're. You're, you're just trying to get it solved. It could be solved through a digital enabled business. It could be solved by getting 10 of your friends together and going and, and you know, brute forcing it and making it happen. It, you don't know exactly what the journey is going to look like. You just need to be open to the fact that the reason why you got into it was to solve this problem. And if it comes in different forms, that's okay because you've achieved what your goal was going to be. And unfortunately, I think a lot of times people miss some of those signs around, well, gosh, wouldn't it be a lot easier if you did it this way? And they're like, oh, no, no, I have the right solutions. You just haven't quite figured it out yet. And so uh, for us, that adherence to why you got into it in the first place, what are you really trying to solve? And then being open to different ways to, to reach that end. Oh my God, I love that. You know, I never quite looked at it that way. As a matter of fact, I would probably have looked at it the other way. You know, what's the solution I'm trying to solve? Um, what's what's the solution to the problem I'm trying to solve, right? Um, where you're saying be married to the problem. Like it's a problem for a reason. Um, and that's what's driving you. And I got that just now. Like I really got that, Marlon. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's... The solution may even evolve over time. What works today may not work a month from now or six months from now. So you have to be flexible enough. And if you get kind of stuck in your ways, you're going to miss out on more kind of creative ways of solving that solving that issue that may make be even more efficient and more more successful. So yeah, um, really getting down and and understanding what the problem is is. I would say more than ninety percent of the issue, because then it's a lot easier to figure out what the what the solutions are. 
Wow, I love that piece of advice. I love that, Marlon. Marlon, I want to say to you and to the audience again, thank you for tuning in every week and giving us an opportunity to share and empower, educate, and uplift you. And Marlon, thank you for trusting in me and wanting to come on my platform and share the story of what you're doing at Next um, Three. Um, Next Three is what I have. Dot com and your acceleration program and how you're helping helping um, tech companies get the funding that they need to thrive in this new world economy. So I wanna encourage everyone to reach out to them via their website and really do, do your due diligence. If this is a platform that you're interested in, that you would like your company to be one of their next to be considered, please do tap into him. Call him, ask questions. Don't use my platform as a place just to stop by and see what color I have on, although you can do that every day, but don't do it for that reason. Do it because we're here to inspire and uplift and educate you, okay? And Marlon, can I thank you again? Can I thank you? This was a pleasure. It really my was. My pleasure. It really was awesome. So thank you, everybody. It's now on the hour and we're exact. So we're going to let everybody go. Thank you again, Marlon. God bless everybody. Take care. Till next week. We'll talk soon.